And welcome, lacrosse fans, to Lincoln Financial Field here in Philadelphia. It's the link, and we are ready for the Division II National Championship game in men's lacrosse here today. Lenore Ryan at 17-3 from Hickory, North Carolina, against Mercyhurst, the Lakers at 16-2 from Erie, Pennsylvania. Dave Ryan alongside Mark Dixon, former midfielder at Johns Hopkins. Dixie, this is what it's all about at the D2 level. Someone raises that championship trophy. Yeah, big stage for both of these ball clubs. They both have been here before. Mercyhurst, of course, winning a national championship back in 2011. The path to get here, Mercyhurst had to knock off LeMoyne, who is uh, a very talented player, um, excuse me, a very talented team, uh, a mainstay in this Division II national championship. Meanwhile, Lenore Ryan knocking off perennial power limestone to get to this national championship game. Both teams loaded with great players. Lenore Ryan had six All-Americans announced by the USILA this week. Mercyhurst, nine to get those honors. So now it's all about the next 60 minutes for these two teams. Who can win this Division II National Championship? Can it be one, the first time ever for Lenore Ryan, or will Mercyhurst take home their second trophy? We can't wait to watch this unfold today. 12-team Division II bracket that we saw a moment ago. Tampa, the defending champs. LR had to beat them on the road. Then powerhouse Rollins, and then... Limestone, longtime powerhouse as well, all on the road before getting themselves to the championship game. And in speaking with Greg Paradine, the head coach, the, the two coaches there, Chris Ryan and Greg Paradine, who started the program in Hickory, North Carolina, as he said to us this week, Dixie, we started with absolutely nothing. We had no facilities. We had no training room. And now we built it all the way to a championship caliber program. What an amazing step this would be today for LR. It would be. And, and they got players from all over. Uh, they had no first-team All-Americans, even with six All-Americans. They had a, a three second-teamers. Riley Say is a player who uh, played at Loyola University after spending some time at Bellarmine, um, and he headlines a midfield, and, and this is a Lenore Ryan team. Uh, you know, you don't want to say rags to riches because they didn't even have any rags to grow out of starting from scratch, so big day for Lenore Ryan lacrosse. Ready for action here today from Philadelphia. P.J. Colello, Keith Glock, David Mueller on field officials for our national championship game. Uh, first and two, a doubleheader with Division Three Salisbury and Tufts here to follow on NCA.com. Will LR win its first ever title? Will Mercyhurst win its first in 12 years? Chris Ryder, head coach, said to us this week, it's been 2,000 forever since we've been to the championship game. Not quite that long. It has been a while. And now the Lakers are back. Powerful teams set to go head-to-head. -head. One will emerge as national champion here today. Sean Duran, a midfielder, also gets a lot of action on the first midfield, not just a Fogo. He's a high-scoring midi. Wins the first faceoff for Mercyhurst in the home whites, head-to-head -head with Matthew Mancini. So here are the Lakers from Erie, PA, the first half-field possession of our championship game. Well, Duran, number 24 in white, not only an incredible faceoff man and midfielder, he is a Division II National Player of the Year. So somebody that Lenore Ryan is going to have to try to counter to win possessions. And they're going to have to play great defense because they're probably going to lose the faceoff battle. Uh, and Mercyhurst now, though, getting the first look on offense. Quinn Simonson, a pass in tight quarters, trying to hit Phoenix Lefebvre from Quebec, Canada. Taken back by LR for a steal. Now the first possession possibly here for the Bears. As they look to clear out and bring it upfield. Brett only. As the goaltender for Mercyhurst will go head to head today with Rob Pensabene. He's a 6'5 junior in the Nets for LR from Mount Laurel, New Jersey, about 20 minutes from here at Lincoln Financial Field. So, a lot of friends and family watching him in action today trying to win a title. 17 3 record for Lenore Ryan this year. The long trip, a 900-mile bus ride as well for them to get to the link in Philadelphia. So Ooh. it hasn't been easy on the road, but a chip on the shoulder for LR, at least their attitude, heading into this one. There's a great spin move and a good shot and a score for Voss. Evan Voss. Seven points in the NCAA tournament game most recently for LR has got the first goal of our championship game. Voss calls his own number. He dodges with the left hand, takes a step up field, gets his defender to overcommit, and just inside rolls. Shows great stick protection, comes across the face of the cage, 
and sticks it. That is a great start for Lenore Ryan. You get into the middle of the paint, good things are going to happen. And Voss taking his man to the rack early in this game. Two-handed player, tough to stop. His head coach told us this week, Greg Perrinane, face-off win. Initially, LR had it. Let's we'll take it back by Mercy Hurst. Good wing play, and the Lakers bring to the offensive end here, trying to get things set up and tie the game. Braden McCard off the wing, one of the captains for the Lakers. Possession into the box, and they'll get set up here in the half field. L Lenore Ryan won that face-off, and they missed the first-time grounder. That is going to be critical today because if you can beat Duran and have an opportunity to get a possession, you're going to have to be really buttoned up on the fundamentals. It's a missed opportunity for Lenore Ryan. Quinn Simonson gets a run here. Aronaquid High School, Rochester, New York. Not too far from Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, hometown of Mercyhurst. The Lakers back in the championship game here. Called Tariff, nearside GLE, a spin move. Trying to get that right hand free. 30 to shoot. This Laker possession. Trying to tie the national championship game up. Tariff free for a moment. Thought about a righty crank instead of pass in front. Looking to hit Landy Moore. But it's intercepted. Pass near midfield, though, is errant. And a 50-50 ball. Goose to head taken back by LR. Yeah, Mercyhurst right now looks a little tight. Not great fundamentals. A couple of turnovers to start this game. Credit to the Lenore Ryan defense, of course. But nerves could be playing a factor early in this game, especially on the side of the Lakers. Voss, the goal scorer, is still out there along with Tommy Aguilar. Quick run to the cage in the right alley. That's stopped. Airborne ball though, comes out of the box on the near side. And Will Kanata, first line midfielder. Charlotte area, North Carolina. Here's Aguilar up top. Controls with a six-foot pole matchup on him. Kanata dodges, left alley. Patient LR offense here. It looks settled, Dixie, in the first few minutes of the game. They do, and you saw the confidence of Voss going one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're spreading out Mercyhurst. They have the defense hung up. See what they decide to do. But Lenore Ryan, they're, they're hungry and they're looking to make plays. A little backhanded effort. Squirts wide. But right now, you're right. Lenore Ryan looks a little bit more settled, a little more comfortable in this early going. Final second shot clock cycle. The shot there from Aguilar was off cage. And that will go out of bounds. And back to Mercyhurst anyway in the first quarter here just underway in our national championship game the final seconds will be dumped to the end line shot clock violation now official four minutes in to our first quarter good defense by this Mercyhurst ball club they have several all-americans on the defensive end including first team all-american charlie gleason liam bogdan is a second team all-american on the defensive end as well so that 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 defensive unit for Mercyhurst holds Brett Olney, goaltender, helps Brandon across the midfield line. A lot of contact, though, between the top of the box and the midfield stripe. Taken back by LR. The Bears aggressive and on the move again. Brandon Webster into the offensive box here for the Bears. Three possessions, three turnovers for Mercyhurst. The first two were in the settled six on six. That one, the Lakers lose the ball in the middle third of the field. Good ride by Lenore Ryan. And you know, this is, a, this is a Lenore Ryan team, the Bears that are hungry. Evan Voss, the first goal scorer. It's another one for LR. Great start continues here for Lenore Ryan. It's Jarrett Huff with the lefty. Recognized the matchup coming right out of the box. Got a running start, heading downhill, and he's just going to dust his defender. With a high to high shot right over the head of the Mercyhurst goaltender. Beautiful shot. Brent Olney is a third team All American between the pipes for Mercyhurst. And he had no answer for the high heat from Huff. 6'3, 200 pound freshman, Holly Springs, North Carolina. Jared Huff on the board. Did not start in the semifinal win for LR, but did have two goals. It was 2 0 for two. And the Bears have the faceoff win to build on the momentum. And the ball right back in the stick of Lenore Ryan here, up by two, couple unassisted goals from Voss and Huff. And what a start here 
for Greg Paradine's team. Yeah, hey, remember we saw Lenore right here a couple years ago in the D2 championship game, and they were really kind of just had like one or two players that they really hung their hat on, really relied on. And so far in this one, we've seen a lot of the, you know, the ball being shared. And this is this strong sweep that Huff scored on just moment, moments ago. But this is a Lenore Ryan team that looks much more well-rounded offensively. Bryce Reese around the cage counterclockwise. Voss and Huff have scored so far. A couple unassisted tallies to begin this game. Mercy Hurst known showing a lot of pressure or field possession time early so far. Reese jumps, shoots, he scores! And how about LR and this great start? Jersey right down the road got family and friends here at the link in Philly and he's got the Bears off to a three nothing start in the first quarter timeout yeah timeout time for Mercyhurst they have had the game taken to them right-handed sweep across the face of the goal about 12 yards out hands free not bad defense is number 51 for Mercyhurst ready Back here at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, L.R. Lenore Ryan of Hickory, North Carolina, 3 f wing on Mercyhurst from Erie, Pennsylvania, Division II. National Championship game underway. Dave Mark, our entire crew, great to have you with us here on NCAA.com. Greg Paradine, as you know, great family tradition, Mark, in lacrosse. He won a national championship for North Carolina, beat Cuse in 91 as a player, and his son and daughter both play. Yeah, and then his son Emmett uh, up at Dartmouth, the Ivy League freshman of the year. Paradine, uh, a tenacious defender back in his playing days at North Carolina. And we just referenced the fact that he started this Lenore Ryan program from scratch, looking for their first national championship, second national championship game appearance, had to knock off Tampa. The Spartans, the Division II champions a year ago. So this is a Lenore Ryan team coming in with a lot of confidence, a lot of momentum, and they're playing like it so far here in early going. Good timeout taken by Mercyhurst head coach Chris Ryan. He is a Randolph-Macon graduate, been coaching for 23 years overall. And that's a good timeout. See if he can settle his team down and get refocused. Rossetti looking for Ham, the Canadian sharpshooter, but it's taken away. Great defense, LR in its own end. And things unsettle, a fast break opportunity for Lodora Ryan, but a big save. Mercyhurst needed that badly from their goaltender in only a flag down behind the play. First penalty is on the way here against the Lakers. In transition, fast break lacrosse, what an opportunity. As only shuts the door a second time, rebound is sent just wide. Bodies everywhere, yard sale for a moment. And the officials will clarify on the first call. That's offside territory, genuine in the midfield line with 8.04 to go in our first quarter. Yeah, what happened was Miles Ham, who got stripped, ran across the midfield line just to prevent transition from Lenore Ryan. And it's, it's tough when a detachment runs across, just trying to hustle, trying to make a play, help his team out. And, you know, the midfielders don't, didn't know that he went over. So seven in the defensive zone. Technical foul, 30 seconds. Lenore Ryan now with the man up opportunity. Miles Ham on one knee in the box. 30 second, first EMO of our championship game here. And Lenore Ryan, a chance for a four nothing start. With six on five lacrosse here for half a minute. We're on the year 45.8 with the man up. 33 extra man goals so far this season. Trying for number 34, a big blast. It's Aguilar with a stop made by Olney. That's deflected in the near corner, but in possession of LR. Well, Olney's gotten into a groove now. He's made three really big saves since that timeout taken by Mercyhurst. I mean, we're at, what, seven and a half minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Mercyhurst haven't even taken the shot yet. Penalty clears back to six on six lacrosse. Ball loose. Aguilar lunges for it in the back 15. And Voss has got it. One of the two goal scorers, a three goal scorer so far for LR. That's right in front. That's in the net again. And how about the start for Lenore Ryan? 
it continues to make it 4 nothing in the first quarter. It's Riley Say, graduate student, transfer from Loyola University, a South Carolina native, just flashes open on the extra man. Good look inside, good handle, shot. Beautiful job by Riley Say as Lenore Ryan continues the offensive onslaught here in the early going. Division one transfer, Charlie Toomey in the Patriot League in Baltimore, Mark's hometown. I know you were very intrigued to see how Riley Say would look at this level. I'd say pretty well so far with a four nothing door step goal and a quick stick tally. How about that? And what the Lakers do now in response will be interesting. That shot in transition is off target. It is backed up by Mercyhurst and Miles Ham, their 6'3 senior from Calgary, Alberta. Great ground ball by number 20 in white, Jeremy Phoenix Lafay. You're going to have to help me on that pronunciation. That's, those are those French Canadian, you know, you want to say Lafiber. I think it's Lafay, right? Lafave. 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 All right, help me out. There, there you go. There's Lafave. There you have it. Second shot opportunity. Like his athleticism, like his positioning, but nice save by Lenore Ryan. And here come back the Bears. They have been really impressive here in the early going. Aguilar gets the assist on the Riley C tally. So Voss, Huff, Reese C have all scored four different goal scorers. That was a six on six even strength goal at the end of the man up. And how about recent company here with a great start and the ball again. A good save a moment ago from the goaltender, Pensabani, who did not start the year as the number one goalie. Was actually the backup for quite a while. And as Greg Paradine told us, the head coach of LR this week, he would be an All-American if he had been the starter for the first four games of the season. Sometimes you have to make changes. And goaltending is a place where... Reese and he scores, partner. How about the start for LR? It's another for Reese. They are rolling here. They are just winning their individual matchups. Obviously, C with the extra man goal, but all the other goals have been one on ones. And Bryce Reese has got some serious giddy up. They take away the right. He just goes down the alley, recognizes that there's no slide. He doesn't even have to shoot that ball left-handed. Is able to get the ball back in his strong hand, his right hand, and he puts it over the shoulder of the Mercyhurst goaltender. Great individual effort by Reese. What a start. Sean Duran, player of the year, All-American, face-off midfielder, 14-25 in the semifinal win for Mercyhurst over LeMoyne and Syracuse. A much needed draw victory at the faceoff dot at midfield. You know, Miles Hammond company, the senior Harvard transfer who is just a fantastic talent. He's got 53 goals, takes you this year and 67 points, taking 137 shots. So number four in white has got to get going here. He does. Not, not bashful at all. You've been jumped. And you've already used a timeout. And it hasn't really worked out yet. So it's just a situation where Mercyhurst has only gotten one shot on goal so far. He's got to settle in, and this becomes one play at a time, one goal at a time. There is no five-point shot in college lacrosse. Ingiani to Fiorini. Luke Ingiani controls near side GLE, a bulldog move, trying to get free, the right hand free. Quick shot, but it's over the crossbar. And it's backed up by Mercyhurst to continue possession by Landamore. 20 on the shot clock. Landamore from Calgary, Alberta as well. Quite a Canadian connection, but a turn right over. And a mistake again for Mercyhurst in the offensive end off the retrigger. And here comes LR on a clear try. Moving pick on Mercyhurst. So bad luck on the offensive end so far for the Lakers. Got to credit Lenore Ryan. They have just come out with a ton of energy. Fifth turnover for Mercyhurst. Are you surprised? Shocking start to me. I think so. When you look at the Division II final, they've been so competitive over the last couple of seasons. And we expected this one to be tight, and it probably will be, ultimately. But right now, it's everything going the way of the Bears. Chris Cross with Riley C. has got one of the five, two for Reese so far. The only multi-goal scorer, Aguilar passing. 
A smooth operation so far in the offensive end. Kanata, his shot blasted off target, is backed up by Boss. And still 31 on the shot clock here in this 80-second shot clock cycle for the Bears. So, Dixie, when you have a lead like this, how freewheeling do you feel as a player? You, you, you feel good. You don't want to have a false sense of confidence. It looks like Mercyhurst has now slipped into his zone to counteract the offensive firepower of Lenore Ryan. But you just want to stick to your game plan. And I think what can happen on this stage, well, another goal. It's Voss again. Free to the right of the cage. Takes a bump. Scores a goal. And it's all good for LR to begin this Division II National Championship game. Six love. What a start for LR here. Two for Voss. Two for Reese. All Bears. I think what you worry about is guys trying to get theirs. And you, you get away from your game plan of sharing the ball. Guys play for the me instead of the we but so far that has not been the case for this Lenore Ryan team they just get the zone rotating they keep the ball hot and the one more to Voss who roofs it beautiful shot all bears in the early going wing play effective this time from Morley 14 and white grabs the ground ball off the wing for Mercyhurst down by half a dozen in our chat, Dixie, this week with Greg Parody, he said, we left the field in East Hartford, the game you and I called in 2021. They lost to the LeMoyne in the D2 title game. They said, we, we just weren't good enough that day. It was not our best effort of the season. They were very disappointed. A lot of guys are back from the 2021 team to try to win a championship today, and, man, are they delivering so far. Big great save. save. Only. Fantastic. He's been great. pennsylvania has been great. The two goaltender. Matchup here, a big stop for LR, and Mercyhurst just been shut down completely in this first half. Yeah, that was a wonderful save. Obviously, that was a, a golden opportunity for Mercyhurst to lift the lid on their scoring, but denied. Right back to recent company in the offensive end. They look very comfortable trying to widen the lead again. That blast is off target. Landon Parker, Holly Springs, North Carolina. Sends it wide to the right of the goaltender only, who has been blasted. <laughs> Let's just face it, so far in our first quarter here, 15 to 4 the shots, 9 2 in favor of LR. Shots on cage. It's been all Bears. Doorstep to Temp. Shot this time only. Makes a great save. Crease call, though, or is it push call? Wow. Only is keeping, you know, 6 0. Mercyhurst is, quote-unquote, you know, not in this game, but only is keeping them in the game. He's keeping this at a 6 nothing. This is easily going to be 10 nothing. He's made four really, really good saves. Reese on the re-trigger. Off the push call against Mercyhurst. Got to be tough. The diminutive Dynamo goalie facing all the rubber here today. That blast shot was on target. And a good stick save again from Olney. Miles Moffitt from Alberta, Canada with a blast. He's been under assault. This whole Mercyhurst team has been under siege in these first few minutes. Race free again, going for the hat trick. Only moves beautifully to his left, makes a save. Now a key outlet from the safety of the nine-foot diameter of his crease. And Mercyhurst really needs a solid clear. And to get the ball in the sticks of their star offensive players, you wouldn't know it, but Mercyhurst is excellent offensively and scores 16 goals a game. Well, they're here for a reason, and they are an incredible team. And to beat LeMoyne. A Division II power. When you talk about Division II historically, it's LeMoyne and Limestone are the two that have the most decorated programs. So much to the point that LeMoyne is going Division I next year. They're elevating their program mm -hmm. up Moving an up. entire level. So, so Mercyhurst is, is no weak sister, and they're going to get it together. Phoenix Lefebvre through traffic, but about shot wide. The left of Pennsylvania. Back up final moments of the quarter. 48.6, there is an injured player behind the action here for Lenore Ryan. That's never good to see in a championship game. Colson Huff, sophomore at 6'4", 190 from Holly Springs, North Carolina, is shaken up here for the Bears. So if you're Chris Ryan, who's been around a long time, great success, has won a championship for the Lakers, what are you telling your team here after the first quarter break? you got to remind them that it's a 60-minute game. 
and they've got to shake the nerves and they've got to handle the pressure of Lenore Ryan. I think you're just reminding them of why they're here and there's a lot of lacrosse left to be played. And it's it's one play at a time, one goal at a time. I think that's the message that Coach Ryan has to share with his ball club. All right, Colson Huff is getting attended to by an LR trainer here. Certainly wish him the best. A quick recovery. Get back in the game. Tough, though, to see someone get hurt like that. Teammates are coming out to help him off the field. That's never a good sign. We'll keep an eye on that. Right leg injury for him. Yeah, it looked like, I mean, we, we, we've seen this before. I felt like he was grabbing the back of his leg, which seemed to be hamstring-ish, much like yesterday when we saw Notre Dame star Pat Cavanaugh suffer a, a left leg injury that way. But with the way he's walking off and not putting weight on that right leg, it might be not that a pulled hamstring isn't a serious injury. Uh, it, it could be a little bit more serious than that. 18 games partner for Huff this year. Three and one for four, 10 ground balls and three caused turnovers. Played well at the midfield for Greg Paradine. So Mercyhurst gets the benefit, if you will, of an extra timeout to regroup a bit. They have taken a shellacking to begin this championship game and it's time to regroup here and get back in it. With the firepower Mercyhurst has, Dixie, this game's never over. No, not at all. And again, it's a lot of lacrosse left to be played. This, they can play for the last shot if they elect to here with under 40 seconds left to go and over you know 50 seconds on the shot clock. We'll see what kind of offensive philosophy the Lakers incorporate. Wynn Simonson, one of their top players, operates along with Fiorini. Near side GLE, a lefty cradle. Fiorini trying to get free, but just can't get the hands free enough. The blanketing defense for LR in the first half has been tough to stop. Simonson. To the right of the cage, double team, bumped hard, low shot, blocked. Never got there. Quinn Simonson trying to grab that in front of the LR bench, but it's out of bounds. 5.3 seconds to go in the quarter. What an amazing effort, both ends of the field for LR. First half, final seconds about to evaporate here. And fittingly, Pensabeni with a save at the horn. Reason to celebrate all three phases. For Lenore Ryan after 15 minutes of play. All Bears. All Bears. And right now, it was fundamentals that was dooming Mercyhurst early. The physicality of Lenore Ryan has been phenomenal here. Mercyhurst. Thirteenth year program history, Lenore Ryan. And the second time they've been in the national championship game. A little more history here as you break down these two programs. Trying for their first ever title. Lost to LeMoyne two years ago in East Hartford, Connecticut for their first ever title game appearance. But Greg Paradine told us this week, Dix, he felt very confident the way the year has gone and the tough sort of chip on their shoulder mentality. All those miles, 1,913 bus miles for this program, Mark, traveled all around the South to win the region and then get to Philadelphia. Sounds like your Delta Miles, yeah. your, your frequent flyer. Uh, Diamond Dave, right. Yeah, That's right. right. Uh, but no, I mean, look. You know, me an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that reminds, you know, that's a lot of travel. Well, let's keep in mind, you know, Division One Denver, the Pioneers, traveling upwards of 30,000 miles in a season. But it, I, I think it speaks to the commitment of the school to the sport to, to allow the team to have that great schedule, to have – the ability to travel, that's what you need at any level, you know, Division One, Two, II, or Three of this sport to have success. And Coach Greg Paradine obviously has that with the Bears. Nice move, speed dodge made, but his shot was deflected. Great defense again. Boy, the shorty matchup or pole matchup, head-to-head -head with Mercyhurst has just been entirely overwhelming the Lakers so far in this game. Without question, it's been... Really, thus far, men against boys uh, in, in terms of what is happening. Changes with Simonson. Phoenix LaFay of the feed and Quinn Simonson, the blast, senior from Rochester and Aronicoid High School, upstate. Finally, the Lakers on the board with our first of the day. 
not to state the obvious, but a much needed goal for the Lakers. And LaFave has impressed me so far in this game. He's really the one player for Mercyhurst that's been able to win a matchup, draw attention from the defense. That time he feeds. Great step in, step down from Simonson. Takes a stick to the chops and is still able to beat the goaltender, Pensabene, with a worm burner. Low to low offering, sneaks underneath the tall Pensabene, and Mercyhurst is on the board. Mancini and Rand will go head to head, face off tie here. Sean Rand at 14 and 25 in the semifinal win for the Lakers over Lemoyne with six ground balls. He's also a threat to score, as we talked about, with one and one for two in that game. Had an early goal and a setup. Face off violation, LR. So here's Mercyhurst again with a chance for back to back jacks. And Brayden McCard, who's a junior from Baldwinsville, New York. That's right outside Syracuse, Baker High School, and the Bees west of the city. We talked about this yesterday in the Duke-Penn State game where Penn State needed to string goals together, and they did that. This is what Mercyhurst needs to do now. They need to go on a run. I'm not saying you have to make all of the five goals you trail by up, but you got to start whittling away at this bare lead. Simonson from the fame, and just like that, right back in that for LR. This amazing first half continues. Ashley six-foot pole creates... And the Bears are blowing out Mercyhurst. Their first of the second quarter, it's 7-1. It, it's been all Bears. And that is a pole goal. Not only does that make the score, again, a six-goal deficit, but Nate Ashley delivers a juice play. Pole goals always hit different. Ashley comes down, nobody picks him up. Rears his arms back, hands free, picks his spot, delivers a strike to the lower part of the net. Everybody's getting in on the act. Nate Ashley did not even have a ground ball in the semifinal win over Limestone for Lenore Ryan. Forget a goal. It's a down low defensive player who rarely crosses the midfield line. Just his second tally of 2023. But you're right, juice goal. Anytime you get a pole goal, a long stick defensive midfielder, a close defenseman who crosses the midfield line and cranks it up and tallies, puts a charge of energy into your bench. And changes the game. Yeah, without question. And now, you know, the task for Mercyhurst, the good news is they've got the, the Division three, Division two player of the year, excuse me, in Duran. And he's staying on the field right now, occupying a Lenore Ryan Bear. So it's five on five lacrosse for Mercyhurst right now. Casey Scott gets a shift. Second line midfield here for Chris Ryan. And the Lakers trying to create a much needed second goal here to stay in this game. The Arini. Operates inside the box. Look at the hands free, but again, this enveloping defense all over the Lakers creates a fast break opportunity here for LR. Trail check attempt, save made. Only big stop in transition. And the Lakers break it out with Liam Bogadane, one of the team captains. That's a big loose change ground ball, much needed for Mercyhurst. Yeah, only with another great save. He's got seven now for mm. the game. He has been tested. He, he has really been has. shelled, and he's staying in there, allowing seven, saving another several in this one. You're right. Could be a lot worse at this point of the game. Only 5-6. Love his reactions. He's quick to the ball. Good technique. Fast reactions. Petschke gets a shift here. The back end. And the Bulldogs trying to create, but he lost that far side GLE. Already one goal from Ashley and a really good defensive play there as well. 30 on the shot clock here for Mercyhurst. Shot off target. Good move there from Figurini, but he looks for the upper 90 and can't hit the cage. 23 shot clock. And we got a timeout. 10.49 to go in our first half here from Philly. Little Ryan, the only five seed Dixie in the history of the NCAA tournament in addition to to make a national championship game appearance. Merrimack made it one the 2019 national title as a six seed. Overall, five seeds, three and six in the NCAA tournament heading into this year. Adelphi went one and one in the North this season. So, not an easy road 
with the tough schedule we talked about for LR, having to play all those road games, the defending national champs in Tampa, then eventually Limestone in South Carolina, which at least was closer to Hickory, North Carolina, their town of 45,000 near Asheville. But here they are, and they're showing us why they belong. Yeah, no question. They've, they've come out guns a-blazing, sharing the ball, tenacious defense. They set the tone early, but Mercyhurst had the first couple possessions of the game and three possessions, three turnovers without getting a shot off. Now it's Mercyhurst's turn to answer, see if they can put some things together. That was a Lenore Ryan timeout. So Greg Paradine sent something defensively that had him call the timeout to get the proper personnel on the field. And we'll see if Lenore Ryan, a lot of times out of timeouts, defenses come out in zones. We'll see if Lenore Ryan does that to throw Mercyhurst off a little bit. Quinn Simonson, part of the goal scorer so far for Mercyhurst, triggers play. Ham number four in white is their 50-plus goal scorer, who's such a weapon out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Can they get him free? No shot attempts yet for Ham. On cue, a skip pass is tipped out of bounds by LR. So Mercyhurst keeps it here, but only six on the timer, off the timeout. End of the shot clock cycle. Here's Ham, re-trigger, lefty shot, way off target, wide to the left of Pence. Benny, there's the horn, and that is a shot clock violation against the Lakers. So another empty possession here for Mercyhurst. Yeah, good defense by Lenore Ryan. They continue to use their size to get things done. Dylan State, Shorty helps bring across the midfield line. They'll get set up again here in half field. Aguilar, an effective role in the first quarter at shellacking uh, Mercyhurst. He had the lone assist of the first six goals. Riley Seedley, transfer from Loyola, had an effective first quarter. Yeah, good to see him with that, that, that man-up goal. He attracts a lot of attention. He's got the pole matchup in the midfield being guarded by Stephen Morley, third-team All-American at the long stick midfield position for Mercyhurst. See handles here. Far side GLE, a lefty cradle to the back 15. 20 on the timer for Lenore Ryan. Pass in the slot. Anybody's ball, 50-50, but it comes out to the near sideline. Kept alive by LR, 10 on the timer. Another opportunity here to the goal, another goal. This great start continues for Lenore Ryan. It's Riley C. Just gets the defender at goal line extended, probably about 15 yards from the cage, and just simply runs by the matchup. Great job by C, direct line to the cage, gets underneath, steps upfield to increase his angle and then slams it home against a helpless goaltender, Brett Olney, who has made seven saves so far, but man, when you're getting the ball shoved down your throat, it is tough to save them all. 34 on the year for C, the D1 transfer from Loyola. Two in the game, two for Voss, two for C, two for Reese. Too much for Mercyhurst so far in this one. Much needed faceoff victory for the Lakers and Hammond company controlling the offensive end trying to get going here. Got to get something going. You know, you got the first goal, a little bit of momentum, get guys more energized, juiced up, but Lenore Ryan, give them a lot of credit. They have shut the door on Mercyhurst so far here in the first half. And Gianni helps operate here in the half fields at the very top of that stack, number one in white. A dangerous weapon for Mercyhurst. Dodge pass through traffic. Again, it's errant. They just have not been on the money with their feeds and their cutting. Hasn't been precise. LR's defense has been better. And when you're smaller like Mercyhurst is, you have to rely on your quickness and athleticism to try to win matchups, and that has not worked out so far for the Lakers. Dodge, another stop. Pensabeni again. Tardif shut down. First line attack, but 29 and white for Mercyhurst. On a ride, gets physical. LR trying to get it across the midfield line and will do so. And under eight to go in the first half. Into the box now for a clear in control. That was a good ride by Colin Tardif of Mercyhurst. Stood up his 
counterpart on Lenore Ryan, but the Bears continue to have success. Which just continues to roll and roll. Eccleston creates again. They just can do no wrong here in the first half. Torn Eccleston from Calgary. Another Canadian connection has been so good for LR. And it is all Bears. Make it 9-1 in the first half. Eccleston is a second team All-American. And there's 739 left to go here in the first half. And it's the first time we've mentioned his name. Sweep to the left. High heat. You know things are going your way. When you have a second team All-American, the caliber of Eccleston, the amount of goals that he scored, not just this year, but throughout his career. And this is the first time you're mentioning his name. That is a good day for your lacrosse team. Great point. 58th of the year for Torn Eccleston to make it 9-1 and the ball again on a faceoff win. Matthew Mancini head to head with the All-American and Player of the Year D2 Sean Duran has been pretty good. He's held his own. And even with Mercy Hurst winning a couple of draws, they've done nothing with their opportunities. Reese has got a pair ready in this first half. And the offensive end, and guess what? The tilted field all the way to the Bears continues here. It's like a mountain now, Dixie. It really is. And and they, this is where Mercy Hurst needs someone other than only their goaltender to make a play on the defensive end. Huff had one, first quarter. Latest came from Eccleston. 6-3 body. That box lacrosse background. Tries that near pipe. This time got bumped off to play. Good defense for Mercyhurst. And Mason maybe with a big shove. But it is backed up by Reese and company. Shorty matchup on Reese. The split dodge move left alley. He's seen he's got the quickness to get the hands free. This guy can do it all. Eccleston with six and a half to go in our first half. Shot clock at 35. This one off target from Jarrett Huff. They just look so comfortable, Lenore Ryan. Very comfortable, very relaxed. They're in a groove right now. Going to be really hard for Mercyhurst to get them out of whack. Do you try some different things defensively here? Maybe be a little bit more aggressive? Maybe, I, I don't know. I, it just feels like this game... Obviously, it's a 9-1 advantage for Lenore Ryan, but Mercyhurst just needs to do something to, to get some of the momentum back and be able to go on a little bit of a scoring run. Huff and Voss, two-man game. Another for Voss. Speed dodge move to his left. Just above GLE goes high. Evan Voss and company are rolling Mercyhurst. The gap widens again. A 10-1 drubbing of the Lakers from Erie, Pennsylvania. It is all LR. Chris Ryan says, I've seen enough. Time out, please. 5.46 to go in the first half. Bears by nine. Patience, discipline. And again, this is an all-American defender that's tired. I mean, he's been playing a lot of defense. Stephen Morley. Boss just uses good leverage. Gets above goal line extended. Hands free just enough to slip it past only in the six by six. Well, Chris Ryan, head coach of Mercy, has told us this week that he thought this game might be fast break, up and down, lacrosse. He thought it'll be like molecules in a, a scientist's lab. They're just going to explode and boil over. Well, there's been an explosion, all right, Dixie, but it's been on LR's side and not Mercier's so far. Yeah, I mean, if, if this was in a classroom in a, on a Bunsen burner, this would be a, a, a science experiment gone wrong for Mercyhurst so far in the first 20 four plus minutes of this game they have got to find something somehow to get back into this thing 
Your captain, Nicholas Mabry, triggers for Ham in the offensive end. He has just been hamstrung so far. 0 for 2 shooting for the 50-plus goal scorer. Simonson has the only tally for the Lakers so far. Well, that's been it. They've got to create something. It's got to happen right now. Some momentum, anything. Good defense. Shorties, fantastic. LR, Colton McCracken, unable to play in the 2021 National Championship game. He had military commitments and couldn't actually attend that game against LeMoyne and East Hartford. He's back now, and he is playing better than ever in transition. Another shot, another score for LR. Victor Powell, another pole goal. Two of those in the first half for the Bears. It's all going Lenore Ryan's way, 11 to one. McCracken, a second team All-American defensive midfielder makes this play. Clearing the ball along the sideline is just getting worn out by the ride for Mercyhurst, but he keeps his feet, continues moving, Gets the ball up the field, and it goes to Victor Powell. Third team All-American. Powell missed six games this year due to injury. Back in the starting lineup, back in the transition game. Scores another pole goal for this Bears squad. Greg Perrini told us this week that his defenseman, who scored a moment ago, is absolutely a beast, Victor Powell. As you talked about, Dixie's battle injuries. And that's a big reason LR is where they are. We talked about Pensabani coming into a backup role into the year. And now it's taken over as a top goalie. Maybe early in the year, LR not getting a lot of attention nationally because some of their top players weren't where they needed to be. Sure. And and uh, and look, let's let's look at the south of Division II lacrosse. Tampa, defending national champions. Then you have Limestone, just traditionally a power. So many national championships for the Saints. Other schools just getting the job done. And, and, and Lenore Ryan, even though they were in that national championship game just a couple years ago, still not a program mentioned in the same breath as, as those first two. But, boy, are they making a statement here in 2023 and certainly making a statement here today. I'll say. On the way to winning the program's first national championship. It's going to take a Herculean effort at this point for Mercyhurst to make a comeback. C's got a couple already. That bounce shot. Looking for the near pipe. Deflected. Good play by Olney. Backed up from Boss. With 3.44 to go. <laughs> Mercifully, I guess, for Mercyhurst in this first half. They've got to get to the locker room regroup big time. Only good save. Sharp angle again. And Riley C thinking for a first track. Thinking about a first half hat trick. He's played great. So is his team. I mean, it's a Mercyhurst ball club that has just been on their heels for this entire contest. Aguilar looks for the upper 90. A big blast off target from Tommy Aguilar. 44 seconds of the shot clock cycle. It's off cage. And when you talk again about this Mercyhurst team, Brett only third team All-American. He's got 10 saves. So he's just under 50% with the barrage that he has faced so far this afternoon. Flag flies. Foss was hit from behind. Penalty is on the way here. Well, Kanata found the loose chain, so delay. Slow whistle flag on the field against Mercyhurst. And a penalty is on the way as soon as there's a touch-up. But no rush for the Bears with the lead, with the ball, and a penalty coming up. C passing. Eccleston. Another flag flies. At least two. Loose change. Another goal. C again. Give him a hat trick in the first half. Riley C, Loyola transfer from D1 to D2, and he's rocking the Lakers here today. Make it 12-1 with two flags on the field. Yeah, now it's just a matter of seeing what these flags are for. We'll pay attention to the officials, but Riley C continues this Lenore Ryan onslaught. Shot from the outside, saved by Olney. Rebound comes to C, and he just fires a rocket. So we've got two 30-second technical fouls against Mercyhurst. One is a hold. The other is interference. The goal wipes out both. So we will 
be at even strength for this faceoff. Lenore Ryan, though, continues to pummel and, and whack away at the, at the Mercyhurst net. 33 shots, 23 of which in the first half, which still has about 240 to go. Dixie a bit on cage. 11 saves for Olney. Benzabeni has got five. Only the one goal allowed from Quinn Simonson. Assist from Lefebvre. That was way back with 13.42 to go in the second quarter. Otherwise, every headline belongs to LR here today. Yeah, it seems like a, a long time ago, which it has been for Mercyhurst. They, they just haven't had a lot of success here today. The key here now in the last 2.15, keep this at 11 goals and, and even, even in a perfect world, you, you can chip away and score a couple more to relax that deficit somewhat. Reese going for the hat trick. The rebound. Eccleston scores. Reese created it. Loose change. Rebound. Eccleston hammers it home. Another for Lenore Ryan. And the onslaught continues for the Bears. 13 to 1. LR is rolling toward its first ever title. Second consecutive rebound goal by Lenore Ryan. Only can't do it all himself. 12 saves now for the All-American for Mercyhurst. The shot rings off his, look like his chest or his face mask, but everything going Lenore Ryan's way. Caroms right into the stick of Eccleston, who slips it into virtually an empty net because only was on the other side of the cage making that save. Mercier is, is coming off a semifinal win in Syracuse over LeMoyne, 11-10. Low scoring, great lacrosse game where basically every major stat in that contest in the semis was even. On the road, as we talked about, LR went to Limestone in South Carolina and beat them 18-11 in the semifinals. Each coach thought this would be high scoring. They thought it would be close. And neck and neck, I don't think anyone on the LR sideline, Dixie, could have dreamt this up which continues, it's another, it's right in front, it's Hatcher with a slam dunk, and it is all Bears, all the time, I'm running out of superlatives, you and me both, it's 14 to 1, the Bears, it just continues, great feed out front, neat finish, good vision, this is a, a Mercyhurst team with nine All-Americans. Nine, including Charlie Gleason, first-team defense. Braden McCard, first-team defensive midfield. You've got a second team in Bogdane defensively. They are just getting worked in this first half. From Wilmington, North Carolina, Kyle Hatcher. Aguilar the helper most of the goals in this game have been unassisted, but it has been no problem Now a 14-1 lead I'm not sure I've called a lot of games like this I mean especially in the national championship where you assume the matchups are pretty even two great programs to get this far sure Last minute first half Nicholas may one of the captains sends that shot not a lot of mustard to it off target and afflicted Pennsylvania the goaltender for LR. Lefebvre, air pass again. Erickson finds it. But that high slot feed, cross crease, it's not very crisp on their passes in the game so far. Erickson cranks, side of the net. Kind of the way it's gone for Mercyhurst in this first half. I, I like the move right there from Simon. He has the only goal for Mercyhurst, just hits the side of the cage. I mean, geez, that's the... That's the first possession, it seems, you know, in about five or six minutes for, for Mercyhurst. Good shot opportunity as the execution wasn't there. Timeout called. Greg Paradine stops the clock. One last possession. Maybe savor <laughs> this tremendous first half and add a little salt to the Mercyhurst wound with a 14-1.
The Lakers embarrassed Dixie, competed once before back in 2019, and Mercyhurst won that game, 1911. I'm shocked. I know you've said you're surprised looking at this score, but there's a lot of lacrosse left here. So what does each team think about? Well, if you're if you're Lenore Ryan, you're just thinking about scoring the next goal and you know making a 13 goal advantage, 14 heading into the locker room. If you're Mercyhurst, just survive this next 12 seconds. Got two starts play. Eight different goal scores. LR here in the first half. Final seconds. Eccleston thinking about a hat trick. Shovel pass. A little backhand cross crease. Trying to get that to Hatcher. And there's the horn before the last shot. And there is the opening 30. Dominance by definition. Fantastic first 30 for LR. If you're Lenore Ryan, I mean, you have to ask Greg Paradine in your wildest 14 to 1 at halftime of a Division II National Championship game, Parody might say, well, my wildest dreams were at 14-0. Uh, but but 14-1 is still a, a pretty darn good first 30 minutes. And we'll see if Mercyhurst can some way, somehow, flip the script in the second half. Hat trick for Riley C, 3 of 6 shooting. Evan Voss, 3 of 5 shooting at a hat trick. Eccleston, 2 for 5 shooting. And two goals for Bryce Reese as well. I mean, everything going the way of the Bears in half number one, Pensabetti had six saves. Challenge down. Find somebody. 
share laughter and make memories that last and last for life. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions, creating a foundation for success beyond our counts. Welcome back, everyone, to Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Dave Ryan, Mark Dixon, our entire crew watching the NCAA.com stream of LR and Mercyhurst Division II title game. Lenore Rhyme out of Hickory, North Carolina. An incredible first half, Dixie, up 14-1. We'll go over the stats in a moment, but I want your thoughts on what brought them to this point as you see some of our numbers through 30. First thing that jumps out is the physical appearance of both teams lenore ryan much bigger than mercyhurst but you're like you know what lacrosse is a game of all shapes and sizes but they've used that size that strength to their advantage as we take a look i mean 36 total shots the face-offs mercyhurst is dominating in that category and they should with the player of the year at division two duran but then you look at the turnovers nine to two lenore ryan has been terrific taking care of the ball and uh, just making Mercyhurst, uh, you know, imposing their will on the Lakers. Highlights first half. It's going to be dominant <laughs> by the Bears. Evan Voss had a couple multiple multi-goal scores and half number one for LR. Yeah, their first, what, four or five goals were all individual matchups, one-on-ones, getting leverage, using their athleticism. And, you know, we're, we're kind of waiting. This is a Mercyhurst team that beat LeMoyne in the semifinals so we're just like okay lenore ryan's just off to a great start let's wait for mercyhurst to get their feet underneath of them start making plays and get back in this game and they scored their first goal to make it 6-1 and that's been it i mean that has been the bright spot other than that man number 17 brett only between the pipes who finished with what 10 or 11 saves there in the first half 12. he has been the 12th mm -hmm. there you go i mean he has been the only real bright spot for this Laker team. And the first five, six minutes, I know it's cliche in the sport of lacrosse, but this first five, six minutes is so critical for Mercyhurst to try some way, somehow, to get back in this game and, and light a spark. Riley C., Loyola transfer, hat trick on six shots. Evan Voss had three goals on five shots, two for Eccleston. The superstar Canadian from Calgary, Alberta. Multiple goal scores, eight different. Bears had a goal in the first half, two pole goals as well. Everything went the way of Lenore Ryan in the opening 30 minutes. Let's see if that changes in half number two. Chris Ryan, head coach of the Lake Show. The Hearst train, as they're known, in Erie, Pennsylvania. And at least a face-off win to begin things from Duran. The All-American, as Dixie talked about, 
has got to come up big here in half number two if Mercyhurst has a chance at a comeback. It was 6-zip after the first quarter and 14-1 at halftime. You know, again, Mercyhurst with nine All-Americans. Miles Ham, a second-team attackman. Ethan Landamore, third-team attackman. These are the guys that are going to have to set the tone for you and try to score some score some goals to get back in this game. Quinn Simonson, good dodge move. His shot was off target, but his backup pass, re-trigger, looking for Ham is off target. And another turnover to begin the second half here for Mercyhurst. They had nine miscues in the opening 30 minutes. Chance here for a clear. Pensabeni, goaltender who had five ground balls, had a good semifinal win over Limestone. Failure to advance here, so to go right back to Mercyhurst with a chance to get something going. I imagine, Dixie, at this point of the game, you just want to create momentum in increments, right? Just bit by bit. You have to. Again, there's no, there was no five-point shot in college lacrosse, let alone a 13-point shot. So you just have to chip away. And there's a miscue by Lenore Ryan. We'll see if Mercyhurst takes advantage, and they do. Something positive to begin the half. Nicholas May, team captain. Webster, New York, near Rochester. Has got the righty rip in tight quarters. Took a hit, kept on trucking. The second goal of the game, finally, for Mercyhurst. Mabe is an All-American. Honorable mention. And I just said a minute ago that the All-Americans, the leaders of this offense, are going to have to make a play. Mabe does just that. Gets underneath the Lenore Ryan defense, right-handed. Is able to protect it, tuck it, stick it. Takes a little shot at the end as well. Made tough customer, 5'8", beautiful individual effort. So Simonson and Mabe now have talent in the game for Mercyhurst. That stops another long run of 8-0 spurt after the 6-0 lead we talked about at the end of the first quarter. Faceoff violation to Rand. So LR a chance here with a possession there first in the half field of half number two. So, Dixie, you play at the highest level. You've been part of each side of these games, I imagine, through junior high school across and at Hopkins. I've never been beat either, this bad day. What's either, the matter with you? Well, either you're way ahead <laughs> or way behind. What's the mentality like for the team way ahead? I mean, listen, again, you know, I, I've been on both ends of this situation where teams I've played on have enjoyed comfortable wide margins of lead. And uh, I, I've been on the, the days where you're the, you know, the, you're the bug and not the windshield. So, uh, it, it, when you're winning in these games, again, it's sticking to what has gotten you here, which is a move like that, one-on-one, -on -one, but you have to take smart shots like we just saw. Jared Huff, another one, partner. Yeah, and, and it, it's, the, it's the we versus in front of the me. You know, sticking to your game plan, doing what's made you successful, and from what we've seen on that dodge, less than two minutes into here in the third quarter, uh, that's what we're going to see from this Lenore Ryan team. It's been like a clinic offensively. They've been patient, precise passing, very few turnovers, and all these stood in his head. I mean, he's made 12 saves. It could be a lot worse than this. It is a 15-2 game, another multi-goal score for LR and Jared Huff. And when you have a lead like this, you're just trying to continue the domination to tell the team that's losing – you're not going to get back in this game. We're not going to allow you to get back in this game. It's not going to happen. And by Lenore Ryan answering that tally by Mabe, Huff, they're, they're saying exactly that. Aguilar got a good first half. Voss in the offensive end, the back 30. Kevin Voss, one of several now multi-goal scorers for Lenore Ryan. Calm, cool, and collective. That's the vibe I get from watching LR play offense here, Dixie. It's been just so precise, so clean. Very few turnovers, very few errant shots. Not a lot of shots off cage. I mean, they haven't had a backup shot. So they haven't missed the net yeah. a lot in this game. Shooting percentage is ridiculous in this one. I mean, it's either a goal or a save. Eccleson's shot was blocked this time by Mercyhurst. Good traffic play. And the loose change is picked up by the Lakers. Chance to break up field. Steven Katz, long stick defensive midfielder. The six-foot pole made a good play on the GB. So Mercy Hurst, another opportunity. But the pass upfield, the outlet broken up again. And however, there's a push call against LR. Retrigger here 
for Mercyhurst a few minutes into our second half. Yeah, Mercyhurst catches a break right there. A dangerous clearing attempt. 20-yard pass to a man covered. I mean, that's akin to, to Jalen Hurts throwing the ball to... Who's the uh, Brown? Who's a, who's a tight end? <laughs> who's a AJ Brown? Thank you for the bailout. Sure. And uh, Devontae Smith, you know, try, throwing into double coverage, even though that was single coverage right there. I was going to say Kelsey, but Travis Kelsey is the tight end for the Chefs, and uh, <laughs> wrong it's his brother, team. It's his brother Jason, who's, who's the, the Eagle, offensive, but he's offensive lineman. lineman. For the yeah, Eagles, exactly. Yeah, brother, I got. They keep... were awesome together on SNL, by the way. If you saw, <laughs> I did not. Kelsey hosting is fantastic. Mabe's got one of two passing in front. Flag flies. Ball's in the net. Call Tariff on the doorstep. Cash in with lots of contact. And let's check out the flag as well. It looks like Mabe with the goal. And this is either going to be a push wiped out by the goal, which it is. You could have also gone late hit or illegal body check as, excuse me, it is Mabe with the feed. Excuse me, you were correct. Number 29, Tardiff with the great catch and finish. But Mabe with that beautiful look. Tardiff takes the hit, pays the price. Push call wiped out by the score. Mercyhurst with another tally. This is their equalizer, Durant. If they can score goals, he can win them faceoffs and get them make it, take it possessions. He gets pushed. That's exactly what happens. Mercyhurst is going to have to take advantage of this situation. So only in company trying to clear up field here. And Liam Bogadane, team captain. Grad student 6'5 from Toledo, Ohio. Maybe and Mercyhurst, another possession. Two goals, third quarter. Their best period by far so far in this championship game. They can get some momentum created here. Tardiff scored a moment ago. Ham is their big offensive star. Simonson, one of the tallies so far of their three on the afternoon. Simonson from Arondacoy. You can tell he's got Canadian influence in his game. He's a righty. It's almost like he's allergic to his left hand. He does not want to put the stick in the left. Braden McCard works there for his teammate Mabe through traffic. Gathers. It's in again. Landamore got free, battling through traffic. Wouldn't give up. And the C's part of the last second for his first of the day. And hang on a minute. Mercy hurts some momentum. They've got three in the quarter. And it's 15-4. Well, I guess who's in the middle of all the action again? Number eight, Nicholas Mabe. This time he gets swarmed by four black Lenore Ryan jerseys. Loses the ball, but because he has four jerseys around him, that means other Mercyhurst Lakers are available. And Landamore, the transfer from Hartford, picks the ball up. Johnny on the spot and makes no mistake about it. Whips it past the goaltender, Pants Bene, for Lenore Ryan. And don't look now, but the Lakers are on a run. And they're getting the ball back due to the faceoff work of Durant. Got scoring LR 3-1 here. Second half to begin things to make things a little more respectable. Mandamore and other Canadian products. Big connection. We talked with Chris Ryan, their head coach, about this week. Same for Greg Paradine. He used to be an assistant coach with the Charlotte Hounds. And Greg Snyder played there for Charlotte from Canada. Have that good connection going. A lot of players from Alberta have gone to LR and have gone to Mercyhurst, making the long trip from Western Canada to Erie, Pennsylvania. And Hickory, North Carolina, and they have really had a big influence on the success of these programs. Have you ever been to Calgary? Atlanta? I have. Covered the NHL for years, absolutely. Have you ever been to, wow, Erie. But there is, and Giannini <laughs> scores for Mercyhurst. It's another for the Lakers. They are storming back here at half number two. This is the Lake Show we thought we'd see from Chris Ryan and Mercyhurst to begin this Division II National Championship game. Out of Onondaga, New York, and Marcellus High School near Syracuse. He's got his first. And how about Mercyhurst with a comeback here? We'll see if Greg Parody needs a timeout. But just a little stutter step. You get to the dirt. You get to the middle of the field. And Giannini with the goal. Junior, six foot. That's a lie. I can see from up here. 
But I, I feel you. He's, he's, he's playing like he's six foot, getting to the center of the field and whipping it past Pensabini. Five different goal scores for Mercyhurst. The storm back in this game. That's a little better after their really horrific start. Mancini, though, a much-needed face-off win for the Bears to get the ball back in the half field. They can use some clock here and settle things down and maybe eliminate a little momentum created here by Mercyhurst with Reese at the midfield line. That's what I always think about. We were getting back to our earlier exchange. These Canadian players that come south of the border, what's it like to, to go to college in Erie, Pennsylvania, when you're from Calgary, Alberta? It's a little bit of a little bit of a culture difference, a little bit of a shift. Reese shoots, only goes low, makes a nice save there, partner. I have been in Mercyhurst, great town. Done some Laker broadcast, done some bowling there. Love Erie Pennsylvania. Big I mean, I, bowling know, Pennsylvania town. Is great. Erie, PA. Yeah. Home of Bob Learn Jr., Mr. 300. I know you know bowling. Sure. <laughs> would you, would, but would you compare Calgary, Alberta to Erie? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Huge culture shock, no question. And save for Hickory, North Carolina. Timeout call. Last moment, Chris Ryan sensing a loss of possession on the end line. Uses one of his timeouts here in the second half. Liam Bogadane, the grad from Toledo, Ohio. Team captain was in trouble right at the end line. They save possession in a 15-5 game. I love the timeout. They're on a run. Keep possession. Let's try to dig more and more into this Lenore Ryan lead. Mercyhurst, 2011 NCAA champs, beat Adelphi that year. The night eight final held in Baltimore, MNC Bank Stadium, Dixie's hometown. Year 22, four times he's been in the semifinals, two times Dixie the runner-up, and as we talked about the championship 12 years ago, knows a thing or two about getting to this level and made a great timeout call a moment ago. I, I love the timeout call. You, you, your, your team's on a roll. You've got possession. You've shown you can score goals now that you've settled in here in the second half. I like how they're spreading this Lenore Ryan defense really wide, really far out. They were a little, their spacing in the first half wasn't terrific. Phoenix Lefebvre handles here, top of the box from Quebec, Canada. A pass for Simonson. A really good first half with one of the goals scored. Far side GLE, good dodge move. Simonson goes low, looking for that far pipe. Just off target, good backup though. Here for Mercier's 28 seconds on this shot clock cycle. A goal here, it's 15 6. Now, you got the idea it's under double digits. It could be a different feel for Mercyhurst, right? Big time. One at a time. Chip away one at a time. Tardiff, Mabe, handles at X. Shot clock cycle dwindling down to 10 seconds. Mabe, big part of the comeback. Double team, slide comes, a lot of bodies everywhere. Flags fly, two penalty flags down. And it's coming here against LR. We assume touch up, another push. At the end of the play from Quinn Simonson, let's sort out the laundry here with two penalty flags on the field. It's going to be interesting to see what we have here. Referees conferring. I believe it's going to be two fouls on the Bears. First call is a cross check on Lenore Ryan. And it looks like that's going to be the only penalty in this exchange may have been a, the second official may have not gotten the uh, the flag out it's going to be on the colton mccracken number nine check just came above the shoulders into that head and neck area so a one minute foul and another prime opportunity for mercyhurst to score some goals the lakers partner 0 for one so far with a man up 60 seconds of emo time critical juncture here trying to make this huge comeback it would be monumental one of the greatest ever Scott out there, EMO, Ham number four and white is a player to watch. May passing, Tardis shot stopped. Pensabeni went low and rejected Colin Tardif, the sophomore from Marcellus outside Syracuse, bidding for the EMO goal. So now down a man, critical clear try here for LR across the midfield line. Big stop for Lenore Ryan. They've given up these four goals here in the third quarter. 
thwarting that extra man attempt can take some of the wind out of the sails of the Lakers. Up 6-0, end of the first, 14-1 at halftime. And Mercyhurst, a lot of momentum and energy with four goals. Make things a little more competitive here in half number two of our D2 title game. Tufts, Salisbury still to come, D3. And also stream with us on NCAA.com later today. Talk about two blue blood programs in Division Three: Salisbury Seagulls looking for their 13th ncaa championship at the d3 level tufts looking for i believe number four i have to look at my notes but the jumbos back in championship weekend after a little bit of an absence aguilar for voss shot clock at five voss dodges scores what a move just enough angle evan voss he's got a hat trick and little Ryan has got a much-needed goal to stop the momentum created by Mercyhurst to begin the second half. Voss didn't need much there. Just stepped, not even above goal line extended, kind of parallel to the goal. And that is when the goalie comes off the pipe, which actually only did not. That's just a guy who's a little taller than the netminder dunking it over top of his head. So Voss... Another individual effort, another nice goal. Four and one for five. Four or six shooting for Voss. See the hat trick. Two Eccleston and two for Reese. And a big day for LR. Face off win, they're right back in the offensive end. And that is where Mercyhurst has been able to come back in this game is by winning some face offs. So the Lenore Ryan win at the dot allows them to try to get again more distance between them and the Lakers Hatcher first half goal I've scored to begin things here in the second half for LR offensively Reese in the back 15 near the end line gets a shorty matchup and the game's leading score is Voss this guy here near side Gilly with four tallies so far in our championship tilt one of many heroes in the game for LR. There have been a lot of guys, including Eccleston, big Canadian, Bull Dodge. Boy, a freight train move along that right alley. Got really physical. Shot clock at 20. Yeah, Eccleston with the, the meathead dodge. Good individual defense by Mercyhurst here. Eccleston keeps on trucking, keeps on scoring. He's got a hat trick. Two hat trick scores today for Lenore Ryan. And after Mercyhurst showed some life to begin half number two, back-to-back -back jacks for the Bears. I thought McCard actually played some pretty good defense here for Mercyhurst. But credit Eccleston for using his size and leverage. Left-handed player, McCard overplayed the left, forced him to go right. And this is where you just got to kind of tip your cap to a player like Eccleston. Beats him with his offhand, was running out of real estate, then has a chop-chop on the corner of the cob. Lenore Ryan, the Bears are eating and eating well here in Philadelphia. Shooting 17 for 41 dicks in the game. Now that's efficiency. I mean, they've been outstanding in this game today. Face-off violation. It's Durant. Then one more time possession to LR. Off another goal scored from Eccleston. It's got to be deflating for Mercy or his partner. Back in the game thinking, oh, we can get this to single digits. We got the man up on the cross-check call a few moments ago against Colt McCracken, but good defense man down for LR, and they end up scoring two goals. Game changes again pretty dramatically. Will Kanata dodging left alley. Shorty matchup on him. Boss dominant. Crossing pass with Kanata, now to X. Shot clock at 40. Get out of the back end. A bounce shot off target. Backed up by Voss, though, on the end line. And 34 to shoot here for the Bears. Bears continuing now to put the offensive pressure on Mercyhurst. Lakers had that run. Stymied on the extra man opportunity. Eccleston, power dodge. Double team comes, feeding Voss. Top of the crease. Long shot. See again. Scores. A lucky bounce. 
Cross crease pass didn't work. Comes to Riley C. Buries another. He's got four. And the big game continues for the Loyola transfer. Lenore Ryan continuing to share the ball, continuing to keep it hot, continuing to make good decisions. It has been a bear of a Sunday for Lenore Ryan. Just a step in, shot. There's nothing fancy about that. It's just ball rotation, keeping it hot, drawing a double. Really, Lenore Ryan contesting his zone there for Mercyhurst. Say, excuse me, C, dials it up, sticks it. Bears are rolling once again. Four for C, four for Voss, three for Eccleston. And after a little light for Mercyhurst, snuffed out by Evan Voss and company, face-off win one more time for Matthew Mancini, who's been really good in the face-off dot. Freshman, Middletown, Maryland. The transfer from Old Dominion has been really good today, head-to-head -head with Duran, the All-American. Or at least good enough. Well, Duran was hot in the beginning of this second half, but now Lenore Ryan has figured him out a little bit. And they're winning possessions, which is bad news for the Lakers, who again was making that, that, that. They're making a run, making it interesting, but Lenore Ryan now back in firm control of this game. 16 of 26 faceoff numbers so far. Quick shot right on Cage. Voss stopped this time. Only a company. Good defense. Now a chance to clear things out with Morley from Ogdensburg, New York. That's the North Country. Near the Canadian border. Across the midfield line. Mercy Hurst looking to get a half field possession. Feels like it's been a while since that EMO where they are in control in the half field. Yeah, Lenore Ryan has scored three goals since Mercy Hurst cut the deficit to 10. And now we'll see if they can continue or get back on that ability to chip away at this lead. This guy, Mabe, has been really impressive here in the second half. A little speed dodge move in the right alley. Ham still scoreless in this game. Their best offensive player just has not been able to get the hands free enough. Quinn Simonson had the first goal this team scored. One of the five so far for Mercy Hurst, the Lakers. And the Lake Show just trying to get something going in the second half. Jeremy Phoenix LeFay from Quebec about shot. Easy save, Pence Benny. Here's the outlet. Here's fast break lacrosse for the Bears. And they'll slow things down with Miles Moffitt, another Canada product from Alberta. Smart play. No break. No numbers. Pull it out. Set up the offense. They've had a ton of success in the six-on-six. Six. I feel like LR Dixie has had a mature approach to this game. Discipline, smooth, slick offensively, precise. It's been like watching a coaching tape. Yeah, it really has. It's, it's been surgical. But it's also been more than surgical. I mean, it's been absolutely dominant. You know, it's been overbearing, accentuating all of their strengths uh, against this Mercyhurst team. Shot clock, game clock, about three seconds difference here, partner, in the final moments of the third quarter. Will Canetta outside the box. Shorty matchup on him. We'll hang out out there. Nate LaShaw, Elmira, New York products. Watches him closely. Canetta offensive end now. Bears set the offense in motion. Flag flies. Penalty coming. Two flags down. Nate Latshaw. With a shove from behind. So a push call apparently on the way here. 10.3 seconds to go. Some penalty time for LR could carry over to the fourth quarter. Yeah, we'll see if Lenore Ryan elects just to hold the ball. Retain possession. If they do have possession at the end of this 10.3 seconds with the man up. No face-off. It'll be their ball to begin the fourth stanza of action. We'd expect that, and we're going to get that. Final seconds will melt away. So about 20 seconds, EMO time for LR to begin the fourth quarter. Already up 18-5. Dominant in this Division II National Championship game from Philadelphia. Three quarters are complete. Only 15-minute stands between LR and the Bears' first ever D2 National Championship. Back for the fourth quarter next.
in the 102-year history of Lenore Ryan Athletics, only one other men's team has won a national championship. 1960, LR football team won an NAIA national title. That's been it in school history, so amazing what could happen here, Dixie, for a program that's only 13 years old. This is a big deal, a really, really big deal. I mean, anytime you're competing for a national championship in any sport, on any level, it's special. But when you consider Lenore Ryan, that it's been a minute since their last national championship in anything, and the fact that this program is only 13 years old. I mean, look, you equate this to the Division I level, Michigan, the Wolverines. They've only been Division I for 12 years, having their most successful season ever in 2023, winning Big Ten Tournament Championship and advancing to the NCAA quarterfinals. Impressive. Six on five lacrosse to open up the fourth quarter for LR. About 20 seconds of EMO time. That shot rejected. Good play only in company on defense across the end line. Hatcher can't find the handle, so a re-trigger here for Mercyhurst. Down 18-5 to begin the fourth quarter. Well, on a good start for Mercyhurst, you thwart the extra man opportunity, so you keep the score at 13, and now you, you just have to make some plays and try to chip away even more. Rain McCard, team captain across the midfield line. Mabe, free shot, stop. Pensabeni standing tall. Tall goalie anyway at 6 2. And he rejects Mabe's attempt on the charge up the right alley. Really nice face to face save. Doesn't have a lot of wasted motion. Very efficient for a big man. Making good saves, keeping this Mercyhurst offense at bay. McCracken. Outstanding All-American Shorty brings across the midfield line, helps clear. He'll head off field for an offensive-minded player. That's Benny. has got 10 saves. He had 12 saves in the seven-goal win on the road in South Carolina against Limestone, 18-11, to help LR get to this championship game. And now they're closing in on some history here. Jared Huff is at a big game, continues that. Great speed, right alley, better shot. All the no chance. It's another for Huff. It's another for Little Ryan. Again, the individual talent and the individual advantage for Lenore Ryan on display. Huff coming from behind the cage. He scored goals in a variety of ways today. Dodging from the wing, dodging from behind, dodging up top. He's a force, a presence. What a shot. And Huff, only a freshman out of Holly Springs, North Carolina, having a day to remember. Three for four shooting, Dixie. Four hat trick plus goal scores in the game for LR. Three for four shooting after two for four in the national semi win in Gaffney, South Carolina over Limestone. So it's just pouring it on. Theme continues. He scored the second goal about five minutes in that Lenore Ryan had. Who could have imagined then that they'd have 19 on the board against powerful Mercyhurst? And you look at the history of this Division II title game. It, it's not often that one team really dominates another. You know, 1977 Hobart, 10-goal victory over Washington College. Of course, the Statesman then moving to the Division Three level and being dominant there under Dave Urick. 98 at Delphi, 18-6 over CW Post. And, of course, a game we called a few years back, Merrimack, 23-6 over St. Leo. 23 is the Division II title game record for goals scored. So Lenore Ryan right now, not only on the doorstep of history in terms of potentially winning their first ever Division II national title, but they could also set the single-game championship record for goal scored. Here's Tardiff with it near side partner. We'll keep an eye on that. You know I love my records. About 12 ago, Tardiff bidding for a second stop. Pensabetti moving so smoothly. And I like your analysis of his lack of movement and motion. Doesn't waste a lot in the net between the pipes. He is something else. Very efficient. He's had a terrific game today. Tall drink of water. And it makes you realize how the goalie room, how talented it is at Lenore Ryan, where he wasn't the starter at the beginning of the season. Hard to imagine, right? Think about that. Four games in, took over the starting role for Greg Paradine, and he hasn't looked back. 
with an All-American type year if you take out the first four. His team way ahead here. 11 saves for Pennsylvania in the championship game so far. Here's Aguilar near side to Ali. Three and a half into the fourth quarter as LR cruising toward what they hope is the program's first ever title. Riley C has had a big day. He's got four on four of seven shooting. That one off target is backed up, though, by Aguilar in the near corner. Canada at X. Voss. Been almost impossible for Mercyhurst to stop defensively. Short stick matchup on Canada. Shot clock at four. Final seconds, and they'll just dump it to the near corner, and that's it for this possession. But LR uses valuable clock, and at this point, that's the most important thing. Yeah, a little window dressing, faking the move to Cage with four seconds, wisely dumping it into the far corner. What that does, it, it just allows you to set up your ride, make the proper substitutions, get the personnel on the field, and that's a weight room statement right there by Eccleston. Eccleston with a big play on the ride as he nails Latshaw. Yeah, it takes it away on an effective steal. The shot's off target, but it is backed up by LR, and they've got the ball right back here. Chance to use at least 74 more seconds and use some more clock and inch toward that national title. Reese back in the field. LR had a couple goals first half. Really good dodger. They've got so many weapons, it's hard to keep track of how many guys can score goals yeah. for this LR team. 16.2 goals a game coming in, Dixie. They outscored their opponents 16 to 8 entering play here today. Mm, impressive. And you look at the path, again, of both these teams to get here. Mercyhurst having to knock off Lemoyne, a team that has so many, you know, national championships at the D2 level, about to go Division One, and Lenore Ryan having the best limestone. The Saints. Voss win move, far side GLE. Shot clock dwindles. Canada on the near side. He'll dodge in the right alley here. Another long, deliberate possession from LR. Trying to use clock and get closer to a title. Shot clock just over 10. Foul shot sent just wide. A rip there from Bryce Reese. It is backed up this time by only and his defense. William. Bogadane, grad student, as we talked about, from Toledo, Ohio. 6'5 defenseman. Been a good one this year for Mercyhurst. I'm trying to think, if this score holds, where's the party in Hickory, North Carolina? Where are we going uh, if, you're, if you're down that way and warming it up and then, you know, keeping it warm for when the Bears get back into town? Probably this morning, right? I mean, that's a long drive. It's going to take a while. But it'll be a big party when they get there, that's for sure. Heck yeah. Scott creates, takes a bump, takes another one. Triple team, bodies everywhere. And eventually taken right back by McCracken and company in the back 15. Boy, their defense just been smothering for the most part. Little gap there to begin the third quarter where Mercier, Mercier Hurst had its way offensively. Other than that, it's just been all LR. It's been dominant. You know, as dominant as a championship game performance that we have ever seen. Again, a few years back, Merrimack and... That program now at the Division One level. Remember that year, what was it? Charlie Bertrand was such a tremendous player for that team, beating St. Leo 23-6. But from start to finish, this game has been total domination by Lenore Ryan. Now it's a matter with Kanat on the far side to finish this game out. Got to stay aggressive enough, have good possessions. Not waste shots. Not that they've done that anyway when it was a close game because they've been so incredibly accurate with their shots on cage. It's been a clinic. Canada, big little pick game. Works at X. Gets free. Scores! Will Canada, senior, just outside Charlotte, has another for LR, and the onslaught continues. They're up to 20 and getting closer to a title. Oh, and how appropriate, too. Another one-on-one. Canada just winning an individual matchup. Left hand. Keeps his feet moving. Gets leverage. Times the checks. 
from the short stick, gets top side, sends it far post. I think now the only question is, does Lenore Ryan, do they start to empty their bench and give their reserves a taste of the big stage here in Philadelphia? They're eating. That's what they're talking about, man. <laughs> the fans are pumped. Because I mean, that's what that, you know, long, I, they've been feasting, haven't they? I don't know about you, ladies, but that, that's the one thing that I haven't lacked since we've been in Philadelphia this week at his we've eating. We've had some great meals. We have had some good chow. Hopefully, another good meal tonight. I think my only disappointment is what John's pork roast is closed <laughs> today. John Duran does win the face off, the D2 player of the year. Here's Mercier's with a chance in tight quarters and a break. That's a Benny. Saw that one go past him for the quick moment, but stays out of the goal again. Now, you look at the breakdown here, Dixie, of the 20 goals, only five assisted tallies. A lot of unassisted great moves, individual efforts have led LR to this big lead. Yeah, and we've talked about it throughout this this game is the, the ability to win those individual matchups, be able to take and exploit your talents against the, the, the defense again for – Mercyhurst, I mean, this, this team, you've got a third-team All-American goalie who's played terrific, by the way, uh, today for the Mer Mercyhurst Lakers and Brett Olney. You've got defenders, first-team All-American Charlie Gleason, a first-team All-American defensive midfielder and Braden McCard. And this is just a, a Lenore Ryan team that has been on a mission in this game, and they have executed at such a high level. Walk out here, partner, for Jared Huff in the near corner. 20 seconds using a lot of the shot clock as much as possible before he'll dodge in the back 15, looking to create something offensively. Reese shot, it's off target. Righty rip, looking for his third. Yeah, and those two goals in the first quarter for Bryce Reese were gigantic. Terrific athlete, good lacrosse player, like his shooting on the run. Handles here, lost a stick. Taken right back by Mercyhurst. Braden McCarr, team captain. Starts to break up field. Reese, good trail check. Good effort. Shot on the move. Cohut. Better effort, again, from Pennsylvania and company in their own offensive end. They have been brilliant. A lid on the goal continues. And that little run for Mercier is to begin the second half. Seems like a distant memory. Two great saves for Pennsylvania. Now with 14 on the day. Mm. He has been good as has this entire Lenore Ryan ball club. I'd love to see some reserves now. I mean, we still have primetime players in the game for Lenore Ryan. I would love to see some of the, the bench players get some run. Think about how satisfying this is going to be for Greg Paradine. Beginning the program, the former star at North Carolina who won a national championship, as we talked about as a player, way back in 1991. You built something yourself, Dixie. And we've had several conversations with Coach Perrion over the years about how hard that is. Hickory, North Carolina is not a lacrosse hotbed. No, it's not. But but down south, you know, you see the success at the D1 level of North Carolina, Duke, High Point, another team that has established some terrific results. Aguilar Pipe gets the iron and a flex to the near sideline and out of bounds. Closest to it, though, yet again. Boss and company, they'll re-trigger. And, and Paradine, a member of that 1991 Carolina team that I think is underrated when it comes to all-time great teams. Undefeated. Led by players like, like Dennis Goldstein and John Webster. I mean, they just had midfielder after midfielder after midfielder. They came at you in waves. Just a very special team. And, and Paradine has, has taken that model and he's replicating success at Lenore Ryan. Canada, Voss, set up, Aguilar, Blast, or righty hammers off target. Canada, the backup. <laughs> First time, partner, Mercy Riss has allowed 20 goals since 1999 in a game. Wow. That's a long time. Really long time. Year I got married. I could do the math on that one. 24 years. You better know it. Kevin Voss over the shoulder shot. Yeah, trying for the nifty highlight reel tally for the upper 90. It's out of bounds. Backed up, though, by Aguilar. 10 on the timer. It was not an on-cage shot. 
It looked like Lenore Ryan's just going to let this shot clock bleed out, chuck it into the corner, get set to ride, get ready to celebrate their first national championship in Bears lacrosse history. 338 standing between LR and its first ever title. Got to be a pretty cool time right now in Hickory. Town of 45,000, not far from Asheville, beautiful part of the country. Been up there before, Boone, App State. It's really nice up there. No, I have not. Need Mountains. to go there. Oh, you need to. Asheville's fantastic. It's NASCAR country. Say no more. Also, Bears country. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll be getting used to more and more of the state of North Carolina coming up. My youngest son, Owen, going to Chapel Hill. All right, good luck to Owen. Absolutely. Can't Go wait. Tar Hill. It's awesome. Beautiful state. And it's been a beautiful effort today for Lenore Ryan. About to win the program's first national championship in dominating fashion. But you talk about the South and the rise of Southern lacrosse. I mean, for, for the longest time at the D2 level, it was limestone. But look at how the sport has grown. Tampa winning a national championship last year. Now you have Lenore Ryan about to win their first national title. The balance of power has definitely, I'm not going to say shifted, but it's definitely balanced out at the D2 level between the North and the South. And it's good to see for college lacrosse, in my opinion. I mean, that's just great that you can have someone like Greg Parody start a program less than 15 years ago and build it to a title. Now, it's not easy to do. I agree. It takes great recruiting. It takes great player development. I mean, look, we talked about the D1 level, Michigan. How about Boston University with Ryan Poley? You know, another program that's, what, only 12, 13 years old. The success that the Terriers have had, winning the Patriot League championship a year ago, going to their first ever NCAA tournament. It can be done, but you need the right coach, the right administration, the right players. But it all comes down to support and development, like you just mentioned, the, the development work. But you need that support in order to get the players and develop them. To be someone who starts a program and wins a title, that's just so unique. What an opportunity to enjoy this for Greg Paradine, his family, his staff. Daughter plays at North Carolina. Son, as you mentioned, all Ivy League at Dartmouth. And he talked to us this week about as good as the offense has been, eight goals a game allowed. He thought the defense was going to win this championship for him. In your mind, was it the defense or great shooting? What did it today for LR? I thought it was swagger and confidence. The early in the game, Lenore Ryan acted like they had been here many, many times. They came out with a lot of confidence and a mission, and they just have been dominant from whistle to whistle with no let up. And the other thing that's impressed me is their teamwork, how they've shared the ball, making the one more, and taking the proper matchups and going to the goal and exploiting those. I mean, it's been an all-around team effort for the Bears this afternoon. Canada back 15, partner jogs this one out. There's no intent to shoot here. Just use more clock and get closer to the school's first ever national championship. How sweet this will be for Lenore Ryan. 13 years in, the relative newcomer to college lacrosse in a non-hot bed in North Carolina. They're going to bring the title home to Hickory. Fantastic season, and what a way to cap it off with the effort here today. Complete dominance, start to finish. Shot clock under 10 seconds to make it official here. 6 nothing after 1. 14 one at halftime. A little run, Mercy Hurst, to begin the second half. Otherwise, all in or Ryan. The final seconds tick away. History is made in Division II men's lacrosse. For the first time ever, Lenore Ryan wins the Division II National Championship. The Bears have done it. They bring the trophy home to Hickory, North Carolina. Champs in 2023, L.R. Lacrosse.
There's the trophy. There's the emotion. That's what it's all about. Congratulations to the Lenore Ryan Bears, Kings of the Mountain in 2023 in Division II men's lacrosse. What a feeling for players like Miles Moffitt, Torrin Eccleston, who was fantastic today. The shorty All-American Colt McCracken, as we talked about, missed the 2021 championship game because of a military training commitment for the Army. He had committed to months earlier. He was not available to come to Hartford with his team for the D2 title game. Greg Perry told us this week how much it meant to McCracken to have a second shot at winning a title and he comes through today. So many heroes today. You know, you mentioned McCracken. You mentioned Eccleston. How about Riley Say? Transfer from Loyola University. Jared Huff, a freshman, having a marvelous game here today. So many heroes all around. So many tremendous performances. Lenore Ryan, the champs. Second ever title in school history. In addition to the 1960 LR football program winning the NAIA title, it's lacrosse in 2023. It's been a long wait. Lenore Ryan has won the championship. Teams get ready to shake hands all over, but the celebrating now. Again, congratulations, Lenore Ryan. First ever five seed. In Division II history to win the national championship as well. Tough road playing away from North Carolina all the way through. Almost a 600-mile bus ride from Hickory to here in Philly. 1,900 miles of travel in a circuitous route to get to Philly and the link. But I'm sure it's all worth it, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the fruits of all your labor. When you start in the fall, workouts. And then, you you know, I don't know how cold it gets in Hickory, North Carolina, but in the cold of February and the, the dog days of winter. And this is the this is where it all pays off. You get the trophy, you get the T-shirts, you get the glory. Lenore Ryan, champs. 20 to 5, the final. First ever D2 title in school history for Lenore Ryan as they take down a really talented Mercyhurst program. And that'll do it. Thanks for streaming with us today on NCAA Com. For Mark Dixon and the entire crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Philadelphia.